Hello and welcome to part 6 of the series on how to create a chess game with ReactJS. In this part, we are going to work on implementing the rules for moving the pieces. So as you can see right now, when I take this pawn right here, and I move it to here, you can see that we can drop it and it just stays right here. We actually want it to snap back to here because it's an illegal move. What are the legal moves for this pawn? Well, it can move 1 forward or 2 forward. And this is a special move because only for the first time that a pawn has never moved, it can move two tiles forward. So if a pawn has already moved, it can only move one tile forward. So we are going to create a new folder in our souls folder. We are going to name it referee. And right here we are going to create a referee.ts. As you can see, we are naming it ts and not tsx because the referee will not be a component. It will not render anything will only contain the rules as we'll check if a certain move is valid. So right here we say export default class referee. And then right here we want to write the logic. And we're actually going to create a function is valid move which checks if a certain move is valid. So for now let's just return true by default. And then let's write console.log referee is checking the move. Like so. The next up, we actually want to use this referee. So, in our chessboard.tsx, we actually want to import it. And as you can see, we also have two warnings, mouse event and use effect. So, we can actually remove those, since we don't use those. So, right here, we say import referee, dash referee. And what do we want to import? We want to import referee from this location. And then we want to create an instance for our referee. So down here in our component, we have our chessboard right here. And then we want to create an instance for our referee. So down here in our chessboard, we are going to create a new const referee equals new referee, like so. And let's see, let's see if we can execute this function, which is right here, is valid move. So let's say every time we drop a piece, which is right here, we want to check if the move is valid. So right here we set the pieces. So I'm just going to add a comment to this, which will elaborate a little bit more. And then above here we actually first want to check if the move is valid. And if the move is valid, we want to update the piece position, otherwise we don't. So let's say if we say referee dot is valid move, let's run it. Save it up, open up a browser, refresh the page, open up the console, and let's make an invalid move or just any move. And as you can see, we see that the referee is checking the move. So this happens every time right now, which is actually good because he needs to check it every time. But by default, the referee returns true. So we actually want to return something else based on the move that was played. So the referee needs to know which move was played. So instead of here, we are going to say that we want previous location, or the previous x location, previous y location, the current x and y locations, and actually also the type for the test piece. So for example, right there, we have a pawn. This is a queen, a bishop, a horse, a rook, and a king. So we also want a type. The first x location will be a number, first y location as well. x will be a number and the y will be a number. And then right here we have our type. And as you can see, we also need to give this a type, but we don't actually have a type for the chess piece. So right here we are going to create an enum for our chess type. So we are going to say enum or piece type actually, enum piece type. And I want to create a enum for the pawn or a value for the pawn for the bishop, knight, rook, queen, and the king. So, and then we actually want to use it right here. So, to use it right there, we just say export enum and then we can import it in this file right here. So, we say this type or it was called piece type, like so. And as you can see, it automatically imported it from our chessboard. So if we save this up, 
we should see that we get an error in our chessboard because right now we have got the function for the referee but we don't pass in the arguments. So let's see. Let's first pass in the previous X location. So what was the previous X location? Previous X location was the grid X and previous Y location was the grid Y. So those locations are saved in this state right here. So right here we pass in grid X and grid Y. So then we want to know the current location, which is X and Y, X, Y. And then we want to know the piece type. So we actually want to access the current piece and then we want to pass in the type to our referee. So to get the type of the current piece, we are actually going to move this inside of here because in this if statement we have found the current piece or well the active piece. And if we move this referee is valid move inside of here, we can actually access the variables from the piece. So as you can see, we can access image x and the y, and we actually want to access the type of the piece. But as you can see, a piece doesn't have a type yet. So right here we say type, which will be of piece type, like so. And then we should provide the type right here. So for this one, it will be a rook. So we can say piece type dot rook. For the one below here, it's a rook as well. Then here we have a knight. Then we have another knight. Then we should have two bishops. Yes. Let's see, like so. Then we have the king and the queen, or the queen and the king. Like so. Queen, king. And right here we have six pawns, or eight pawns, actually. So right here we have a pawn as well. And now we can scroll down to where we call the referee, which is, let's see, right here. And right now, we try to access the variables. We can see that we have a type. If we click on the type, we will see that the arrow is now gone. And we can actually access the piece type inside of here. So let's just console.log some information which we have. So here we have our previous location which will be a set of x and y. Then we have the new location. So this, so this is actually previous x and previous y. Current location will be x and y. And then we have the piece type, which will just be, see, remove this, piece type. And we can actually just name this piece since we named the piece as well right here. So let's save this up and see what we get in our console. Let's refresh the page and if we move this pawn right here, we see that the previous location was 3,1, which is correct. Current location is 2,4, also correct. The piece type is 0. And if we look in our enum, we see that the 0 piece type is a pawn. So let's say if we, for example, take a rook, which will be 0, 1. Two, three, three. So we should get a three then. So if we take this rook and put it right here, we see that we have the previous location of zero seven comma one. You see that we have the previous location of seven comma zero right here. Current location of six comma four and the piece type of three. And if we look right here, zero one two three, that is corresponding to the enum of the rook. So that's good. So now that we have all the value right here. We can actually start by implementing the rules. So for now, we are actually going to implement the rule for the pawn. So right here, we want to say if type equals piece type dot pawn. And here we want to write the logic for the pawn. So by default, let's return a false so that the default move is not valid. And right here, let's check if our move is actually valid. So right now we want to check if the pawn is actually moving one or two tiles up and if it has already moved it can only move one tile up and to do that we actually need to add one more variable since we don't know if we are moving our own pawns or the opponent pawns. So we are going to create a new variable right here which will be team and this will be another enum which we are going to create right here. So right here we're going to say export enum 
team type and then we get an opponent team and an our team like so and right here we want to import the team type and the team will be of type team type like so and then as you can see we need to pass it in our referee.isValidMove function so we actually also want to specify the team for the uh, for the piece so how do we do that let's see right here we have a type which will be black or white let's create another variable const team type equals and let's see p equals zero which means that it is for a black one or a black piece so then we want to say that the type is from the opponent we say team type dot opponent otherwise it will be white and it will be our team so we say team type dot our okay. and then right here we can actually change this to something else we can say team type equals team type dot opponent if it is the opponent then we say black otherwise white and then we can actually do the same right here so if it is for the opponent it starts on row 7 and our pieces start on row 0 so right here we say team type equals team type opponent question mark 7 and 0 so now that we have that we can actually import or use the team type right here and we actually also want to add it to here Otherwise, it doesn't know that the variable is accessible for the piece. So, as you can see, we all have red lines. That is because our team is not defined. So, right here, we add the team to every piece. So, to the king and queen as well. And to the pawn as well. And let's see for the pawns we don't have a team type ready so we just need to type it in manually so this will be the opponent and this will be our team and right now we can actually pass in the variable right here we can say p dot team so and then if we log it as well we can just log the team right here let's see if we move a black piece we get opponent which is zero and if we move a white piece we get ours which will be one like so so now that we have the team we can actually go ahead and implement the logic for the pawn so we want to check if team equals team type dot hour and then we want to check if the pawn is on the first row but it is zero one on the first row so the starting position so we say if py equals one so if it started from the first row then we want to allow it two different types of moves. The first move is that the pawn can move one square up, and the second move is that the pawn can move, let's see, two squares up, like so. So this is only legal for the first move. So we say if px equals x, because the x value has to stay the same, the pawn cannot move to the left or to the right, it needs to stay in the same column. Then we want to check if the difference in y value is only 1 or 2. So let's see if our new position y is 2, our old one is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. If the new position is 2, or well actually we have 3 because 0, 1, 2, 3. We have 3 minus 1 which, equal, which is equal to 2. So we want to check if the y is equal to 1 or to 2. Only those two moves will be allowed. So we want to say and and right here we want to say y minus py equals 1 or y minus py equals 2 then we want to say console valid move like so and otherwise well we're not going to write that right now but we're going to say return true let's save it up and refresh the page and if we move this we should see a valid move nice and if we move it back and move it two forward we should also see a valid move which is correct so if we move it three forward it shouldn't be a valid move but as you can see we don't see the valid move because this is from the previous one and right now we don't see one for the next one so we just move it back let's move it to the upper left 
not valid and let's try to move it one up which is valid and then two up is not valid so only the first move is valid or well only the first move can be two squares up so now that we have implemented a rule for the spawn we actually want to put the pawn back when we make an illegal move so say for example we put it right here it shouldn't be dropped right here it should spawn or go back to this place so to do that we can actually save this one or save this in a variable so we say const valid move equals this because as you can see this one is returning a boolean so right here if the move is valid we actually want to update the x and the y with the new location and if the move is not valid we actually want to reset the location the palm so to reset the location we want to set the position to relative again so we say active piece dot style dot location or position yes equals relative let's see if we save this up we should see something weird appearing so let's see if we move it right here as you can see it's moving all the way down to here and if we inspect the element we see that this because we still have our left and our top so if we move this to relative we still have a large value for the left and the top and if we decrease this let's see to 100 pixels and then move it down to 0 pixels we see that the pawn is slowly moving into its position so if we set this to 0 pixels and this one as well we see that the pawn just moved back into its original position so we actually want to strip those two attributes so we actually want to remove the top and the left attributes from the active piece so we say active piece dot style dot remove property then we want to remove the top property and then we also want to remove the left property like so and if we save this up and let's see refresh the page and drop a pawn for example right here just pops right back so as you can see we cannot move it same goes for every other piece but if we move a pawn in a correct position or a make a valid move it will actually place it so let's start from the left let's move one up as you can see it's valid so it puts it right here move it two up it's valid so it moves it right here move it three up it's not valid so let's try two again it is valid one valid and let's move it one up again and as you can see the move is not valid well why is that that's because we only check if the move is valid if the position is still on the first row so we actually also want to check the position is not on the first row then we want to check if the x coordinates are equal and then we want to check if the y minus by equal to 1 because we don't want to make it move two spaces up anymore because it has already moved so right here we are actually also going to say return true let's remove this for now save it up and let's see if we can move a piece and as you can see we can move a piece and for the first piece we can move it two up and for another piece for example this one we cannot move it two up anymore because it is not yet or well it is not on this row anymore so with this we have created a simple rule set for our pawns only the white pawns at this moment the next time we are going to implement the rules for the dark pawns and we are actually going to try to implement the attacking rule for a pawn because a pawn attacks on the upper left or the upper right and for the black one it will be the bottom left and the bottom right so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you could follow along leave a like comment down below subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode bye